Welcome to the Shoreline Conversations podcast. This is episode 10 and we uh, have a really special guest this week. His name is Clint Dupin and uh, he was a guest preacher from this past Sunday and man, uh, we just had a lot of great conversation. He mentions this like sponsor that we have. It's for legal reasons. We don't have sponsors. <laughs> uh, he just, I introduced him to some really great throat lozenges. Um, but uh, uh, man, we're really excited to talk today. Uh, we talk about a lot of different things. We're talking about uh, uh, judgment and how we shouldn't be judging others. Uh, we get into a lot of, um, you know, some interesting topics that are very timely. So, and I encourage you to just invest this time in this and, and let's, uh, let's see what the Lord has for us this time. So without any further ado, let's have this conversation with Clint Dupin. So welcome, Clint. I'm super uh, excited for our conversation today. I'm, I'm super grateful for you and, and for uh, just coming to Shoreline and investing. So I, I want to start for, uh, you know, those who are watching and listening uh, and uh, maybe are a part of Shoreline, but also we have people that aren't a part of our, our local community here listening. So uh, kind of just tell us like who you are and what you do. I know there are big questions. Yeah. Big questions. Big questions. But uh, who, who are you? What do you do? Where are you from? What? Give us the the details. About Cole, before that, I, I just have to give a shout out to our sponsors. Fisherman's uh, Friend. Fisherman's Friend. I, I I didn't know about these five minutes ago. You're learning so much from your experience. Yeah. Why here. Why aren't you Why aren't you talking about this more? Well, let's have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> this is a brand new bag. <laughs> <laughs> this, it's so good. This has changed my life. It's changed my throat. It's he's yeah. happy. Oh, it's the best. They're yeah. the best. They're yeah. The best. It, now they do look like. Like the dehy- dehydrated, like uh, brand brand flakes. Yeah, yeah, they do. But then they just explode. They kind of like mouth. like look like dehydrated like meat patties or something. Anyways, yeah, they're really good. They're though. incredible. They're the best. What was your question? Okay, who are you? <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, first of all, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, your thing here yeah. at Shoreline is pretty incredible. My name is Clint Dupin, and um, who am I? Man, I I would say uh, you know I'm a husband first. Um, and I have four children, yeah. so then a father, and um, I'm a I'm a church planner, church startupper guy, and uh, for the last two and a half years, um, we've been working diligently in the East Bay of San Francisco mm-hmm. to to get our church East Town started up. So it's a tough location. Yeah, it is, <laughs> uh, and, and, and we we chose it on purpose, yeah. right? It's like we've always loved the Bay Area. I met my wife in Sacramento, and we oh, spent cool. a lot of extra time in in the Bay Area. Then we moved to Michigan. Wow, so very different. Very different. <laughs> yeah, especially during the winter. Yeah, yeah, very different. But yeah, yeah that's um, we started feeling just this nudge, this calling to to do something. And, um, I think, uh, there were a lot of reasons that I did not want to move. I didn't, you know, I love the Midwest. Um, I, I love the weather here, but yeah. the biggest thing was I felt like we were doing a lot of good things there. Yeah. And I tried to justify that in my own life. And one of the things I didn't even talk about this to you, uh, yesterday is, um, in my prayer time and just just listening was I really felt like God was saying a lot of those good things that you're doing are, are things I never asked you to do. Mm-hmm. And they kind of distracted me <laughs> and I was yeah. hoping it would prevent me from starting the church. Um, but one thing led to another. Um, we felt that confirmation from others. We felt it from the Holy Spirit yeah. and picked up and moved and wow. we came to the San Francisco Bay Area. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how... Um, you know, I want, I, and maybe you can give some insight on that. Like when, when you are maybe doing some good things, they're positive things. They yeah. can be good things, uh, good things for the church, good things for your family, for your community. Um, but maybe not, uh, something that the Lord is specifically calling you to. Is that like, is that like, cause you have certain skill sets and that like, you, or you have some proclivities towards like an area that maybe like, I, I'm curious. Cause like, I wanted to do music when I yeah. was in San Diego and I grew up there and I wanted to do music and I, and I wanted to be, uh, in San Diego. I never had intentions of leaving. Um, and so I was like kind of on the right path, but it was just the, where like I came here to visit a friend and who worked here at shoreline and, and now I'm here and I've been here for like eight years. Did you ever go and back home and get your stuff or did you just, I did, I did. Okay. So did. you didn't just stay. I, I came here, went back home. <laughs> you got the cat was there for a little bit. And then I got, okay. I know cats, no cats, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. And I, I just felt like, 
it was really hard to like make that decision to move here. Cause I honestly, truthfully, I love Monterey. I love, um, I love this area so much, but I never wanted to leave San Diego. Mm. And, but I made that hard decision and it was the right decision. And I, I love doing what I do. And I've, I've come to know and understand and love this community, but it was like really hard. And I felt like I was doing good things, yeah. but like, I wasn't listening to that. Like there's, there's new opportunities. Yeah. There's better there. I'm calling you to a certain area. So I, is there, is that something that like, I yeah. just didn't want to leave San Diego. <laughs> I, Cause it's San Diego. I do believe this sounds weird and maybe, you know, you've never heard this before. I, I do believe God makes people for geography. I, I do. I, I don't know what it is, but I grew up in a Christian home mm-hmm. and I think there was this bent towards things got to be hard. You need to be miserable if yeah. it's honorable and right. So snow. So you were <laughs> yes, like, okay, I have to snow. stay where the snow is. But I remember first hearing that conversation and thinking through that. I'm just like calling is bigger than a vocation. Yeah. And I think in the church, sometimes we, we, we get that messed up where it's like, well, calling is only people in full-time ministry yeah. doing something. It's like, no, it's like God made you, you have a gift and a talent. I saw that expressed on Sunday <laughs> was absolutely amazing. You can use that anywhere. Yeah. But I do think that there's places and seasons where God uses us even more, but there are some things. And I, I really discovered this. There were some things that I really thought like, oh, this is where God has me. Mm-hmm. I'm doing great things. And I remember even people, uh, mentors in my life, mentors are those people that will speak truth regardless Mm -hmm. of the outcome, right? Regardless of, hey, if we're friends after this, they're going to speak it to you. It's a part of the gig. It's a part of the gig. They're like, hey, listen, this is causing way too much distraction in your life. And I'm like, "Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Uh, You probably need to give this up. You're running to the spotlight too much, this, this, and this. And it was, it was distracting me from what I know. I knew that God was calling me yeah. to really do. So I don't know if that answers your question. No, but definitely. I think, yeah. 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 I know it's, it's, I mean, isn't that like one of the biggest questions that I think Christians have when they, they know and understand the truth of like the, yeah. the Holy spirit, like tugging on them and pushing them to certain like things and, and opportunities and, and ministries. Uh, but the hardest, I think, I think that's a common question for like new believers and, and uh, long time believers. Like, is that the Holy spirit? Like talking to me is, is this the Lord calling me to something? Is this, is this wisdom and, uh, or is this selfish ambition? Is this, um, my personal desires and like wants, or is this the pressure from friends or family or, you know? Um, so that's, it's helpful. I, I think that's like a hard thing for people to, to be navigating, but Hey, that's not what you talked about yeah. on Sunday. So let's, I want to, I want to dig deeper into this cause it's, it's a great, great topic. So on, on Sunday, you, we, uh, we got to hear you kind of go on this, this journey of looking at, at judging others. And, um, I just wanted to just kind of set like a platform for, for this time right now. And can you just give us like a quick review of, of, of what you were talking about on Sunday? Um, but really just how, uh, how should Christians be wrestling with, with judgment and the judgment of others? And I know that's a big <laughs> overarching yeah. question, but uh, Buddy, just, that was like over 24 hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what I talked about. Well, you brought something. You brought some notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think first of all, it's, you know, it's, you guys came up with a series, um, yeah. and I made a joke about this yesterday. Yeah. It's like, give some this people, to the guests. Uh, yeah. <laughs> give, give judgment to the guests. Yeah. Appreciate that one. Right. <laughs> no, I, you know, I love Kevin. I love yeah. your team here, but, um, yeah, I, I talked about, I will not judge. And I think it's one of the hardest things for us, not just as, as Christians. I think it's one of the hardest things for us as humans. Mm-hmm. And, um, partly because we're always, we're always dealing with it, yeah. right? We're always feeling either judged or we're always, we're feeling inadequate or we're feeling, I mean, we live in such a transactional society and culture where, you know, everything that we do, you know, everything that we invest in or that we do yeah. is constantly being evaluated. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my, jo- my job, my parenting, um, my dating life, all, all of it, right. Mm-hmm. Is constantly be, am I, am I. Am I measuring up? Right. And so it's just one of the things, whether or not we believe it or not, right. Or whether or not we, you know, really like, oh no, I don't judge or I do. We do it in certain ways and we do it, you know, um, we all have different ways of doing it and we've all been on the other, the the wrong side of judgment. Right. right? So I, I think everything that I talked about from the angle of Jesus 
is he's countercultural, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, he comes, he comes from a place to show us how to be human, how to treat others. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come with the idea of, of judging others, right? It doesn't come with that, that brokenness. I mean, you know that, but if we understand judgment at its core, it is to bring peace. It is to bring freedom. Yeah. Um, That's why we have a judicial system, right? Is to, is to figure it out. Now we, we can go in, you know, for hours and talk, is it corrupt? Is it not corrupt? Yeah. But, you know, in, in its purity and its pure form, it should bring about freedom in people's right. lives. And so I was trying to get to the point yesterday. I don't know if I got to the point, but I was trying to get to the point is like, Hey, listen, like there's been a lot of damage that people that yeah. call themselves Christ followers have done Absolutely. because of this issue of judgment. And then trying to take people to a place within 32 minutes. Right. I know I was given 30, but maybe 34. Maybe. Right. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, but I was, ta- you know, trying to get to people to a place where I was saying, hey, like if you, you know, if you could see that judgment is to bring freedom in people's lives, if you could look at people as God sees them, how would that change not only your life, but the, the ones that you're interacting with, right. your neighborhoods, your workplaces, your social spaces, yeah. I think it would be tremendous. Yeah. I think uh, something that like I was thinking throughout the day yesterday as you were, you know, doing your message and, and just like reflecting on the day, I, I was thinking a lot about how, you know, I think judgment and like gossip, um, they kind of coincide with each other a little bit there, but, but there's a, there's an interesting uniqueness to them, like, uh, together that I think they're, they're very common. Obviously I think everybody does that. But like the one thing that I kept thinking about is like, they're so easy to like, like in a group setting to like kind of explain away like, Mm. Oh, I'm not, I'm not being judgmental. I'm just like assessing the situation. Or It's like that phrase, don't take this the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So everything you said before that was a lie. Yeah. Or like, or like the gossip thing of like, like, did you hear? And it's like, Oh, it's not, it's not gossip. It's like, we need to make, we need to like, you know, know this information and I want to make you aware because it affects us or Mm. what, you know, it's like, Oh, that's not gossip. That's like, you know, I just feel like it's such an easy thing for, for, uh, I think it's easy to explain away. Yeah. And I think if we like think critically about it, um, it's easier to come to the conclusion that like, okay, yeah, I, I do, good. I do that on a daily basis. Well, I, I, I think that there's a basement and a balcony to everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I would say in the basement lives gossip mm-hmm. in the basement lives sarcasm, right? These are deformed or perverted forms of judgment. Right. Right. And so we can try to explain it away. Yeah. And then in the balcony, right. When things are functioning in a healthy, you know, in a healthy realm or perspective, it actually brings like what I talked about earlier, brings freedom to people because you're not, you're not coming from a broken place. Yeah. You're not coming from an insecure place. You're not coming from a place of anxiousness, right. Of divide or fear. And so I think this is what, you know, Jesus comes and he walks the earth as, as we should, um, Mm -hmm. giving us a pure picture of what it means to be human, right? Right. Because Adam kind of messed up, you know, some others did. Yeah. But I think it's this idea is like when Jesus would arrive on the scene and I said this phrase and I stole it from somebody, I don't know (laughs) who it was, but grace always arrived first, Mm -hmm. but he wasn't. You know, it it wasn't like he was 50% grace and 50% truth. He was 100% grace. He was 100% truth. He was willing to speak truth 100% of the time because he was, he was willing to give 100% of grace all the way to his life, right? Right. To sacrifice his life. I think a lot of times in this culture and in in our society, we're unwilling to do that. Um, I, I think people value their friendship Mm. more than they value the, the, the person themselves. It's like, you, you I go back to the right. transactional piece is like, right, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of times where it's like in our culture, we, um, we need, we always have an agenda, mm-hmm. right? I, I need you in a relationship to make me uh, feel whole or whole, right, right. you know, it's like, because I'm broken in here, but if we could get to the place where we could be healed and we could see you and I could see each other for like the broken people that we are. Right. But at the same time, we're trying to create the best version of Cole yeah. and the best version of Clint that we can. It's like, Hey, I know you're created 
for more than what you're doing yeah, right, right now, right? I feel like you're trying to escape a little bit, buddy, yeah. right? And so we speak on that level. We speak on the balcony level right. and not on that basement yeah. level. So Come what, on, that'll preach. So what, what is it that I'm trying to escape from? I don't know, man. <laughs> we can talk about that. That's next session. That's next session. That's that, off air. Yeah, there's questions coming for that. I'm gonna, I'm, this is more counseling for <laughs> Why me. are you yeah, sweating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm going to get to some deep-seated issues in my life. Um, no, uh, I have those. Those are very on the surface for me. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I did want to kind of something that I think, you know, you talked about in your sermon, but I want to kind of expound upon is, uh, this idea of the perception of Christians, mm-hmm. you know, why, are, why are we perceived as judgment, judgmental and, and, uh, I want you to solve our problems. Mm-hmm. Can you solve our problems with why we're being so <laughs> judgmental? <laughs> but would you agree? I mean, you agree that we like Christians as a whole, we're, we're viewed as a judgmental group. Yes. And so, but why is it? Oh, you that, want me to expand on <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Yeah. What if I came here and just did just yes, yes, no. no? Yes. It's like my kids after school. Uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. I'd be like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, but like, why, why are we viewed so judgmental? And then, and then I'll get into some other stuff. But. It, it is amazing to me though, how, how, like I was listening to what you guys have done here as a church over this last couple mm-hmm. months for, uh, for this area. And I know that, you know, you, you think about, um, formalized education, uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to healthcare, all of it is like, it started based on a group of followers yeah. of, of Jesus. Um, the thing too, is like, I want to say this before I get to your point, cause yeah. I don't want to always run down Christians and always run down right. the church. It's what I do and it's what I am. Yeah. Right. But I Me think, too. I think it's one of the things where I want Christ followers. I want Jesus followers, Christians be, to be known for what they have been known for historically and mm-hmm. running towards the crisis and running towards the mess, um, not pointing it out and not trying to figure out whose fault it is yeah. and not trying to figure out and, and making people feel terrible about it. Um, w- do we live in a messed up culture, messed up society? Yes, but this isn't new. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't shocking God. Like he's yeah. not sitting up there. Right. St- you know, eating the fisherman's whatever <laughs> fisherman's friends, fisherman friends. I just messed up our sponsor. <laughs> he's not, he's not sitting there and going, I've never seen this one before. Right. But it is amazing how Christians have become known for as society's peacekeepers and judge judges. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like that, that, that never was what it was intended yeah. to do. And I think we have to fight against it, but I think in our culture, in our society, um, are somewhere something changed. Mm-hmm. Um, where it became this, uh, I love the coast guard had this, um, motto and it was early on and it was, we have to go out. We don't have to come back. Hmm. We have to go out and we don't have to come back. And this is what, what started to happen is, um, coast guards, when it first started happening, um, it became, they became clubs after a while. Did you know that? Like no. on the East coast, they would have to go start another one because what happened were, was people wanted to become a part of that, mm-hmm. that thing. And then before long, it became like, well, we don't really need to go out. Oh wow. The church has done the same thing. Yeah. It's like, can you imagine if we all had the mentality of we have to go out, but we don't have to come back. We all have to pick up our cross. You can't pick up hate. You can't hang on to hate and hang on at the cross at the same time. Right. You have to lay one down. Mm-hmm. And so I think for a lot of us, I'm not trying to get overly political, but yeah. what we've seen is a lot of hate mm-hmm. and we're picking that hate up and trying to balance the cross and the hate at the same. And you can't, yeah. it can't be done. And it looks awful when you try to do yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And, and And so I think when you try to do something like that, before long, it's like you miss the point. Before yeah. long, you you forget who you were called to be, and you forget who it is to really, really follow Jesus. And you've heard this. You've grown up probably in the church, or yeah. have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's like Jesus. Like he literally left with only eleven people. He didn't do well with all twelve. Right. Yeah. It's like crowds would follow him and loved him, but they would be turned away all the time. Yeah. And it's, can you imagine if just a percentage of people here at Shoreline would say, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to hate. I'm going to be responsible to the calling and whatever it is that God calls me. And I'm going to pick up my cross. Picking up my cross means laying down my agenda, laying down my political agenda, laying down it all. Yeah. 
and, and pursuing who Jesus is. Yeah, I know it's tough. I mean, I know that's like kind of sinful nature. Um, but is that just, is that selfishness? Is that, uh, you know, I mean, does that really put you ahead in any way? But like, what is it that makes that so difficult for people? I think we're in the state of forgetting. Tim Keller always says that he's like, we're in the state humans are in the state of forgiving and I don't like, or forgetting. I don't like when people say, well, that's just our human nature. It's not yeah. right. If we're in the image of God, it's our sinful, sinful nature. nature. And I believe that it's where we give strongholds mm -hmm. right to the evil one and bitterness begins to creep in and we justify it. Yeah. And before long, um, my, my friend is a rock climber. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to be, but I fell too many times <laughs> uh, at three feet, four yeah, feet. Yeah. It was like, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done here. Yeah. But he, he talked about this idea as I asked him one time, I said, what's the size like of a foothold that you need? Like in order to climb to that, yeah. it quarter. was less than like a quarter inch. Like yeah. it's almost like an eighth of an inch. It's like. Yeah. Think about that in our own lives is where we've given these footholds. And yeah. before long, it's like everything I talk about, everything that I do, everything, all the sideways energy I spend is bitter. Mm -hmm. And it's like if, if the enemy, and this is one thing I didn't say in my message yesterday, the Roman um, society finally figured out how to slow down the movement of Christianity. At first, it was like rabbits, right? Yeah. It was growing. The more they would persecute, the more they would do all of those things, the more the movement grew. Right. One of my friends says the greatest two church planners of all time was Mao Zedong and <laughs> Fidel Castro, right? When they yeah. eliminated Christianity, yeah. formal. It's like it expanded. It grew. Yeah. You know what they did? The Roman culture finally figured it out. It's like if we could pit Christian philosopher against Christian philosopher. Yeah. And it started slowing down, um, um, virtually halted. So I think it's those things. It's like, man, the enemy is at work right yeah, now. Yeah, and totally. if we could identify that and say, oh, that's that's not the version of Jesus that I see in the scripture. Not yeah. my version of Jesus, but the version of Jesus that I see in the yeah. scripture. Isn't that so common? I mean, I feel like, you know, I think about my own life and how many times I've justified like opinions or actions or, or um just use scripture out of context in like discussions with friends. And like, it's so hard cause you, man, it's just, is it the way you grow up? Is it the, the impact of culture around you? I don't know. I just, it, it's one of the more frustrating things I've caught myself doing, you know, is, is, uh, uh justifying my personal beliefs or justifying mm. my, my, um, tendencies or, or like leanings, whether it's, political or not. I mean, just in general. And I, and I justify them with like my faith or something. I just, it, it feels so dirty when, it, yeah. when you, when you critically think back on it and it, uh, I just, it's a, it's a difficult thing, but I also don't think that that's like what drives me. It's not, not what drives my, my life and my relationships. Um, but I, I just, I'm, I'm thinking through like, you know, am I, am I a part of that? Am I a part of like what's being viewed from outside the church as part of the problem of this like judgmental um, rule setting, you know, group of people. Well, yeah. what I can, what I can tell about you and I'm making a judgment. Judge me. Um, Please. I saw it on the stage. I, I saw how much you cared for your, your two best friends, yeah. your best friend <laughs> yeah. who was there. Um, but I could also tell our interaction. I even talked to my wife about this. Um, we had several interactions with staff people yeah. that were just really genuine. Mm -hmm. And I think what people pick up from you, and especially probably if they spend more time with you, is that you're you're a loving person. And I, I think a lot of times, and I said this yesterday in our in the message, is like right now, I don't know why it seems like this, but people have a desire more to be right. Yeah, you know about yeah. whether what they know politically, what they know scripturally, what they know about a faith or anything more than they value that relationship. Right. right. And I don't sense that from you. Right. And I, That's I generous, I, 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 <laughs> but I, I think, I think people on the outside and this, I remember hearing Andy Stanley talk about this. You can't be angry at mm -hmm. a entity. You can't be angry at an organization. Right. It's always a personal thing. Yeah. So your friends or yeah. your people who you interact with who yeah. are angry at the church, they're disassociating. Yeah. Disassociating yeah. Yeah. And probably because they had a very hurtful situation to happen yeah. personally. Yeah. I'd hate for that to translate into like these relationships with people that like are seeking after 
or, or had these bad experiences with the church and like you want them to have a better, yeah, you know, view of the church. It's, that's it's, good. it's been tough, but I think, um, you know, I wonder if that's a generational thing, you know, is that this idea and focus on like, uh, let's say from people outside the church, looking at the church, um, is it a generational thing where like a younger group of people mm. is saying the church is a judgmental, like bad place? Uh, and is that something we need to focus on? I, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I think that's a great question. I, I would answer this in two ways. And the first one would be, I think that you have the builder generation, the boomer generation, boomers fell in line with their, their parents going to church. Like, right. Hey, my parents did, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Boomers go. And then the Gen X is like, they would listen to their parents argue on the way to church. Mm -hmm. And then they would argue on the way to back to church and they would see their dad do whatever. <laughs> and they're like, is this really what we want to be yeah. a part of our life? But we probably should still do it because it's, we need to check that box just in case this stuff is real. Yeah. Then, you know, we don't want to miss out on heaven. Yeah. And then the next generation, <laughs> right? The millennials are like, they're calling crap, <laughs> right? They're calling, they're calling like abbreviations are okay. Right. They're, they're like, they're, they're calling BS. They're yeah. calling BS on it. They're like, hey, why would I children well, listen to this? So why would I give my time? Why would I give my time to yeah. this? And now Barna's reporting that Gen Z is like, they're not even believing. Most of them aren't even believing in God anymore. Yeah. So I think that there's, I think that there's all of those things that are wrapped in. I also think that what your generation has mm -hmm. at its fingertips and the next generation has, there's so much that they have available to them. Accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. And for so long, think about this for so long within, especially the Catholic tradition, I'm not ripping on the Catholic yeah. tradition, but a lot of traditions, you couldn't ask questions. Right. And so yeah. you've had a lot of this authoritarian, I, we will tell you what to do mentality. If it was that type of church, yeah. this is how things are done. And I go back to your friends who felt maybe literally bullied by a couple of people, yeah. but people have felt bullied by the church a yeah. little bit and it is not practical to their life. It's not playing out and love doesn't win in that whole situation. Right, right. So I think there's two different things that are going on a generational calling BS. And yeah. then I also think that there's this, I know for me, my wife always challenges me with this is like what you could get by with 10 years ago, yeah. sane. Um, and talking, if you had charisma, yeah. if you had a couple of good things to say, but now it's like authenticity, uh, authenticity. Yeah. Do you really care? Yeah. And the mega, I was a part of a church that was 15,000 people. Yeah. It was a mega, mega church. And it's like good things happen. But at yeah. the same time, it's like, if you're not careful, that can be a void of relationship. Right. And now I just see like what we're discovering in, in church startup world is like, oh my gosh, like I haven't been in the trenches with people and knowing what they're thinking and knowing mm -hmm. what they're battling with. So to answer your question, I don't know if that answers your question, but I think that there's probably scholars no. that could answer that way better, yeah, but no. that's what I'm sensing and I'm, I'm seeing. No, I definitely think, I think what you're expressing is there's, there's different desires. Can oh, we just take a time One more sponsor quick? for Fisherman Friend. <laughs> I did. I I gotta say, I popped one in right before we. Okay, go. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, uh, man. I I I think there is like a a reality to like different generations have like different. You know, I think about Shoreline. It, we are a uh, we are a seriously different church um, all around than we were. I mean, Thomas, you've been here longer than me. So, I mean, even ten years Who ago. Who are you talking to right oh, now? Oh, that's our producer. Do you have Thomas? a friend in here? We do have a friend in here. Can you not see him? The yeah. Oh, there is another person. No, but I, I mean, Thomas, is that fair to say? Like, I feel like Shoreline is even in the past 10 years has shifted so much, but even thinking back further than that, I mean, yeah. I just see though that like there's a different, and when you see like the generations, like, man, there's a different world when we were like, oh, we're, we're, uh, an evangelical church, you know, 10, 12 years ago, there was a lot of, you know, the music looked very different. The, the preaching looked very different. the, you know, even like the, the, the order and like operation of like the service, you know, it was very different. And like now it's, man, if, if, uh, you know, if there's not that on authenticity, if there's not that, that openness in this, um, uh, that vulnerability, 
like it it doesn't work. So let me let me can I respond to that? Yeah, please. I, don't, yeah. I know it wasn't a question, but I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a word from our sponsor. Again. He wanted me to say something, but um, <laughs> but I think that I think um, what you're what you're referring to yeah. is a place that I go to. Yeah, which I get what you're saying. Yeah, but if it is true that ninety seven percent, I shared this yesterday, of de church and unchurched people live in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and you guys are considered the Bay Area. Yeah. Um, if that's going to change what you're talking about, I believe it can't just be a pastor and the staff and the approach, the attractional model yeah. is, is just a piece to it. It used to be the thing that we led with. Yeah. Now I, I'm not going against anything that you guys no. are doing at shoreline because I feel like a lot of my gifts yeah. are, are more in that category. And yeah. I'm like, man, I got to really learn. Like <laughs> people don't care. Yeah. People, people aren't, we live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Why would I give my Sunday up to, to your thing? So if Luke 15 is for real, mm -hmm. and this is, this is one of the things I believe in is that you leave the 99 for the one. Mm -hmm. It's not that you ignore the 99, but you have to cultivate a heart in the 99. So those people who are coming, it's like, how do we continue to create a heart in those people for what you're talking about that care about the one and the one to me is their neighbor. Yeah. And people d never believe me on this. It's like, um, if you ever get a chance to read, um, uh, the art of neighboring, mm -hmm. right. They do this, they, they do this, uh, quiz in there. It's like name the person in front of right. you. Have you seen this where they do yeah. that? Like the person beside yeah, you totally. and then name a need. And yeah. then everybody kind of fails at that part. <laughs> right. It's like, but I think this is where, I think this is where it's going to have to change is that. Um, my buddy, who's a, a a pastor in San Francisco, and their church is amazing, right. and it's it's growing, and it's been growing for the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that he says, if you haven't had dinner at a at a person's place, if you haven't been in relationship, the last place you should be here is uh, uh, last place you should be here is on Sunday morning, right? And so his point is not, not he's going to kick people out if yeah. they're here and they've never met anybody <laughs> before. But the point is, is like, man, if this isn't do, if you aren't living organically, yeah. like if you aren't living this thing out yeah. where you are strategically placed, I don't like to be a doomsday person, but I'm like, I want to see some of this change yeah, yeah. in my okay. gener in, in my lifetime mm -hmm. here. And it's going to have to change because followers of Jesus Christ is not a, Hey, I got to get you to my church and, and they'll teach you about Jesus. It's right. like, no, they, they might never come. Yeah. They're, they're not a project. Love them. Right. right. Right where they are, even if it's hard and even if it makes you do and feel things that you, 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 you don't think you should feel or do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wonder if that's like a, does it have something to do with like the availability to, or the, the, um, mm -hmm. you know, the access to, you know, I, like why, like we were saying, why do I, why would I give up my, my Sunday? Like potentially the best w day of the week for a lot of people when I live in this kind of area and I have so many options, like why would I, you know, I, I think that maybe tends to lean towards like, this is also a generational thing with like the access that people have to quality music, to, you know, entertaining teachers or speakers or well, we live in a, we live in a, a pleasure seeking finding yeah. culture. What's good for me. Yeah. Relationships are secondary. Like yeah. God designed us for relationships. They should be primary. And so when relationships become secondary and you live in a culture, this is what one of the things I've discovered in the Bay area is that relationships are secondary, if not mm -hmm. third or, or if a, not an activity, right. I am here for my career. I'm here to, I'm here for my, if I get time for it, for my kids and their education. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if I don't make it, I'm gone. Yeah. And so what we're talking about, the, the, the thing that we're trying to sell yeah. is relationships yeah. like the broken, the broken, the brokenness that you go to sleep yeah. with every single night is only going to be healed through relationships. Totally. Right. Yeah. And those relationships are the conduit are the vehicle for Jesus. And I think right yeah. now is we, even within the church mm -hmm. Cole is like, 
we have elevated consumerism. We've elevated it, it, what's in it for me. Yeah. And that's that lower room mentality is like, because once you start removing, you start talking about what it really means to follow Jesus. Like, whoa, right. I thought this was about me. It's like, no, right. you have to understand is like my motivation following Jesus has to change. Mm -hmm. I'm picking up my cross, laying yeah. down my agenda for those type of things. But yeah. I think that's a big cause for it. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, I was thinking about like, you know, when you, you're talking about like the, the, you know, leave the 99 for the one. Uh, and, and then you were kind of leaning towards like the, you know, for who's that one, who's that one for like individuals. And you're talking about like relationships. And I remember on Sunday, you mentioned like, you know, how you, you got to this place where you had, you talked to your black friend that, um, uh, you know, about whether you had done anything to hurt him. Can you kind of go into that a little more? Cause like, I, I remember that being this relational thing where you felt like I need to, I need to reach out. I mean, was that, is that a part of that? Yeah. When we went through, you know, as we're going through COVID, this pandemic and then all the racial unrest, yeah. um, there was just some eye opening things to me yeah. that, that was happening. Very individualistic, like very not, not pointing finger uh, what I felt like God was saying to me in that season was, Clint, you've got a lot of soul searching to yeah. do. You you've probably done some things and said some things, mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of what it, this is my story is yeah. where I spent a lot of time in prayer. I spent a lot of time self reflecting yeah. and reading, and I started having to acknowledge privilege in my own life and acknowledging opportunities mm -hmm. in my own life and things I had done flippantly, yeah. um, not even thinking about how it affects other people or saying certain things right. that they affect other people. So in one of the, the mornings, I remember this very vividly is like, God started speaking to me about one of my friends really close. It's like, you don't even really know his story, yeah. but you think that, you know, the answers to a lot of other things, which I think tangent, I think, um, that we've done. Yeah. I think that we've done a lot of gaslighting, a lot of smoke screening yeah. that we go, well, that organization's wrong or that's bad or what about that? I'm like, but what are you doing? for this type of thing, right? Yeah. What are, what are, where are you learning and where are you repenting and right. confessing in your own life to learn and to understand both sides? Yeah. And so I did, I, I remember going to my friend and, and just having this discussion. I said, has there been anything, this is a really easy question to ask people is, has there been anything, um, that I have done, mm -hmm. um, that has hurt you or hurt our relationship? Right. And he, he shared some stuff with me, yeah. um, that had been done. And it was one of the things that he said, and I did not talk about this yesterday. Yeah. He goes, I don't feel like your heart really breaks for what is happening, um, to people of color in our nation right now. Yeah. And that, that, that one was, that was really hard to hear. And there, that was where I was om attempted to be defensive. Defensive, yeah. And yeah. then I just felt like the Holy Spirit is like, listen, yeah, listen and let your heart breaks for what my heart breaks for. Yeah. And man, it's like, I, 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 in that season is like, and, and I'm still in it. I, I really am. And it breaks my heart to mm -hmm. watch what our black brothers and sisters have endured over the last two, 300, 400 years. And, um, it breaks my heart for what I'm seeing happen in our country. Yeah. And I'm like, man, how do we, you know, the, as long as we remain judgmental yeah. and as long as we have hate, I really believe what the scripture says is like the, the um, God's hand of favor is lifted. Yeah. And I just believe it's lifted, right? Like it's yeah. not on us. And until there's people that say we're wrong yeah, and we're not, it's not important to us to be right anymore, but we need to, we need to be on our, our, our knees, our hands and our faces and ask for forgiveness yeah. and repentance. What was, what was that like on your, like, what was on your mind when, when that's what he was, his response to that was that like, you know, I don't feel like your heart really breaks for what's been happening to people. Oh, I, like, I had all this stuff come up in my head. Yeah. I've been working. We started an organization called Hope Water Project yeah. where we help Pocot, you know, in Western Canada. Yeah. But it was always a thing. Yeah. It was always good things, but it was. It was, there was a separation. Mm -hmm. There was, there was never, I, I, I had, well, I did this or I did this. And it was just, 
this culmination, this overwhelming sense of like, that's, that's not what he's mm-hmm. saying at all. Yeah. And it was just like, your heart isn't breaking um, for what I'm sitting here talking yeah. to you about right now. Yeah. That's happening in your own backyard. Yeah. So you had to meet him with that, like grace first mm-hmm. thing where like, I need to not get defensive and I need to, um, you know, admit, do that, that self-reflection thing that we were talking about, like earlier before we started recording, just this self-reflection of like, Hey, maybe, maybe I don't need to be defensive and maybe I can consider that this is like a reality for me. Let me, let, one of my things that I learned in this whole process was yeah. coming, it, it is a privileged thing to pick up the phone and go, now I'm ready. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like, now tell me where I've been wrong. Yeah. And then, so that's where I needed to be really, really careful. Mm-hmm. And I learned even there that he had been the one showing me grace. Yeah. Not me showing him grace. And he'd been showing it to me for a couple of years that he was giving me grace. Yeah. Um, and he's very strong. Right. And very influential. Yeah. And helped us start East Town. But wow. at the same thing as I've learned in this season is like, it isn't, it, isn't it amazing? I don't know if you want this or not, but isn't it amazing that a lot of white leaders are now ready to learn and now teach me and now yeah. I'm ready to read when you hear, you start hearing voices like we've been, we've been saying this, we've been yeah. trying to alert you to some of these things. So I had to really figure those things out and go and ask for, re- and go back to even more people and go, I am so sorry that I approached you like this. Like now I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Like who am I? Right. Yeah. And I think if people can just rest in who Jesus is and listen and respond to his promptings, mm-hmm. It's like so much healing will take place. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's powerful. I, I, uh, yeah, it it opens up that uh, the door for for me for like the self reflection thing. And I, I mean, it's it's a hard thing to process. Like I, I think because of um, there's that initial, you know, defensiveness, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of people. But uh, it's a hard. Um, it's hard pill to swallow and just to consider that maybe you're, uh, you know, you need to think through the, these kind of things, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, Hey, I want to ask you something that, um, you know, I think through this discussion, I, it's been kind of going through my head and, and, uh, I think maybe you can shed some light on this. Is there, is there after all of that, after we're, our goal is to, to not judge, like, are there, places are there times are there relationships where maybe there's such a thing as healthy judgment mm-hmm. yes yes uh, y- y- yes yes make this that is, t- write that one down just take a, take a <laughs> yes i i really do and i i wish we could have spent more time on this yesterday but i just think like um i've had to do it mm-hmm. i mean i've had to step into it with people people have had to step into it with me yeah. And being on the other side of it, um, now I realize what they were willing to risk because they loved me so much. Mm-hmm. And um, it's easy for us to judge people with void of relationship. But I think there has to be a relationship. Right. I really, really do, especially with how temperamental things are right now. Yeah. It's like and you have to come at it correctly. And I think you have to come at it biblically. And I think right now is it's a hard time to do it because, well, isn't Jesus accepting of all people? Isn't Jesus this and Jesus that? Yeah. Well, Jesus meets you where you are, but he doesn't leave you as you were. Right. Right. And it's like, that's every encounter that Jesus had. Yeah. And if you're unwilling to change some of the things that are in your life, I I love you. And I know that God loves you, Mm -hmm. but there's so much more. Yeah. Like you are like a... A older man (laughs) and with his water wings and you're having the heyday of your life in the, in the uh, shallow end of the pool and you would walk in Cole, if you had children, you would say, Hey kids, we're staying out of the pool while that guy's in it. (laughs) And you're like, does he not see everything else? Does he not see the deep? Does he not see the slides? Does he not? And he thinks that this is it. Yeah. It has to take people that are driven and submitted, have given the throne over to God in their life that are able to come into a person's life and say, Hey, 
there's a deep end. Yeah. And, and I, I'm watching you self medicate. I'm watching you do self destruct with things that we were never intended for. Mm -hmm. And so it's an invitation yeah. mixed with challenge. Jesus yeah. was invitation mixed with challenge. Yeah. And, and so some people are going to respond and you think of the scripture, it's limited. I mean, he really breaks it down. Yeah. There's the wise, the fool and the evil. Yeah. Evils are easy, pretty easy to spot. Yeah. The fool is hard to spot. Yeah. They shake their head and like, oh yeah. But they value that relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you check, they ask in the same question in three weeks, or they're getting drunk for the 18th time, or they're doing this, or they're having this hurtful relationship. You're like, buddy, you, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not taking it. I'm not going to, what is it? Cast my pearls before swine. Right, right. But then there's a wise person. They only need to be a follower of Jesus that you begin to speak into their life. And they begin to respond because the yeah. Holy Spirit is active. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It brings and it, freedom. And it sounds like it's kind of a, that's, it's accountability, you yeah. know, as well. I mean, I think accountability takes, takes someone to say like, Hey, I, I'm, you know, me saying to you, Clint, like, would you speak into this in my life? And like, I, I want you to be like on me about this thing, you know? Uh, but there's this, um, you know, it's a trust, right? I mean, it's a, it's a feeling of like, I'm. I'm open to you. And that sounds like the wise person. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I think there's a beautiful reality in that of like saying like, I'm concerned about you. And just like you were saying earlier, it's, it's that seeking for freedom, mm -hmm. you know, like I want freedom for you. Mm -hmm. You don't know all the, you're not like, you're just focused on this. Like, yeah. you know, it's the milk versus the, the full meal they talk about yeah. in Hebrews, you know? Uh, yeah, and it's I, I think there's a there's a beautiful reality to that of of wanting that for your your brothers and your sisters, um, so yeah, I that, that that's very helpful for me to be uh, thinking on. Man, there's there's been a lot to to you know digest in this in this time, but man, I'm so grateful for for you and for for the wisdom that you have that you can speak into this and and man, we've just loved having you. I know oh, we man, still it's been there's great. still some things to go you know here yeah. with the staff and stuff, but. Man, I, it's been it's been a lot of fun to have you here on Sunday and and for us to you know do this together. It's it's this is a this is a great topic. Yeah. But you know you're you're wise, man. I appreciate. I've I appreciate never heard you. that before. Thank never. you. Yeah. Your wife's never said that. <laughs> that's the first time. <laughs> no, I really, oh, do, man, really I appreciate do appreciate it. appreciate you and the position that you're in and and uh, taking the time to come and great. and discuss this. So thank you, Clint. Thank We're you. Grateful to have you. And I uh, hope to have you again sometime. Yeah, man. I, I just want to say thank you to Fisherman's uh, <laughs> friends and Filson. Uh, and Filson. Yeah, we're, we're appreciative. <laughs> thank you, guys. We love you guys. Yeah. And we're so thankful for what you're doing here in Monterey. It's thank incredible. You. Thanks. Good to have you. Whether you're watching this podcast on the YouTube channel or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear our weekly episodes. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week with another one.